when I was talking about the other company that I went to after Super Ego in North Carolina, they 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 got some mess with them too. So I don't know if you want to talk about them next or what, but they got they got a whole mess with them too. Um, I don't know if you heard of Made Truck Company out of Eden. Ma- what what's the name North of the company? Carolina? Made M A B E S out of Eden, North Carolina. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I heard of them. So that's what you driving for. <laughs> that's that's what you driving for right now, or that or that didn't work out either. Nah, 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 that didn't work out either. And I actually recorded the whole let and go firing process, and it was just amazing. It was amazing what they were saying. They didn't know I was recording though, so yeah, that didn't work out either. Give give me a little taste on what was what was going on in the uh, in the orientation. Um, orientation for maids, it was, it was pretty organized. I mean, now I can't say that the, um, the orientation was, it was, it was good. They, they broke down what, what, you know what I'm saying? What you needed. Um, the hotel, it was iffy. Um, the first hotel, I was like, no, nah, I'm not standing. It was like an econo lodge. I was like, no, nah, I'm not staying there. They had another hotel that I knew about that they sent drivers to. So I asked to go there. And I was able to go there, but uh, yeah, the orientation was good. But you didn't stay with them, though. I mean, did you did you start driving for them and then quit, or you just didn't go through the whole yeah. orientation? Nah, I, it was a um, it was like a three day orientation, and then uh, I was supposed to go out with my local trainer for two weeks. I went out with her for two days, <laughs> and then. The um my recruiter called. They only have two people that do recruiting, and uh, one of the recruiters she called me and she was like, uh, you know, your local trainer she's not coming in tomorrow, so you can come in so that you get paid for the day, um, since you're in training, and uh, you gotta watch the safety uh safety video like come in for a safety meet and that they do like every three months for a bonus. So I was like, okay, cool. I went out the next day. I went there. Mind you, this is day three. After driving two days local with the trainer, this is day three. She told me that. So I showed up after the meeting at eight o'clock in the morning. I walked to her office and I'm like, hey, what am I supposed to do next? And she was like, what are you even doing here? And I was like, uh, somebody told me to come here and be at the meeting. And she was like, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't tell you that. I said, you did tell me that. And she was like, no, I didn't tell you that. You, why would I tell you that? I said, how would I know? I only been in here. I only been working for three days. How would I know what time to be here, what day to be here? You know, y'all only had these meetings certain times. And she was like, well, maybe the other girl told you. So the other lady walked in. She's like, did you tell her to be at the meeting? She's like, no, I haven't talked to her. So off real, I'm like, okay, they they looking at me like I'm lying. I'm not the one lying. So I told my trainer about it. She was like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Boom. When I, the fourth day, she said, uh, you going out over the road. I wasn't supposed to go out over the road until like two weeks after that. And she just, boom, you going out over the road. Said, okay, how long I'm going to be gone? So I tack them up for two weeks. Okay, cool. So I'm running around <laughs> trying to get everything prepared and, you know, for the next day to go over the road. So I went over the road. Um, obviously you can tell by the way that I dress that I am a stud, you know, I'm, I'm a lesbian. So I met the trainer that day. It was a female and I met her and she was cool. We get over the road. The first day we going to Texas. When we get to the truck stop, you know, that's like a two day trip. So we get to the truck stop and see like we talking and stuff and she like, you know, feeling each other out or whatever. And she like, yeah, I brought this charger. I'm like, what kind of charger is that? She's like, it charges, uh, it charges your phone, but it was like a magnet. And she stuck it to the refrigerator. And I'm like, that looks kind of cool. I ain't never seen nothing like that. She like, start laughing. She's like, no, nah, I'm just trying to, it's my toy. I'm like, your toy? Why would you bring a toy? And she's like, if you hear something at night, don't, don't worry about it. So, you know, 
that was kind of unprofessional. I'm like, okay, here go this uncomfortable situation. You know I'm gay, so now I got to deal with this the whole time. <laughs> and every day, it was it was just like literally, I get I I'm climbing up on the truck. She touched my butt. She I'm talking to my girlfriend on the phone. She want to start talking to me, like. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was terrible it was terrible she wouldn't wash we pulled it to the truck stop uh she claims she don't have no shower credit so my cousin tell me about uh you know you can do team showers and only use one credit so i asked her about it she like no they don't do that anymore like, okay but he just told me that they did so the next time we stopped i asked because she didn't <laughs> she didn't shower and she was musty. Like, she was just constantly musty. The whole truck, just musty. Down there, musty. And I would notice when I'm driving, she keeps going to the back, spraying stuff and just perfumes and stuff. <laughs> to the point that I actually asked her, like, on the fourth week that I was out with her, I finally asked her, like, hey, you're going to have to start showering more. Like, we literally park at truck stops, and you too lazy to get out and walk to the bathroom. You rather pee in the cup. Like we females. I said we want I'm gonna take a shower. You stay in the truck. You don't even want a shower. On the house. Thank you. Thank you. It's very sweet of you. See ya. Let me back up. Let, let me back up. Like, like, did you did you let her know that you was, you know, that you was a lesbian or part of the LBGQ T community? <laughs> She could, t- I mean, I, I dress like a dude. So, you know what I'm saying? You she, you you can look at my appearance and you can tell. And then, of course, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend on the phone here and there. So she knew, you know, by two, by day two, she, you know, she knew for sure, okay, yeah, I'm gay, you know. But during the week, that's when she started telling me, like, just look, look, saying little sleek things and shit like that. Like, oh, I tried, I tried to mess, I've tried to mess with a girl before and, and I told my husband, I'm going a, I'm to a get a girlfriend. And I just keep laughing it off because I don't want it to be uncomfortable, like, with me just putting her in a place. You know what I'm saying? Did you by chance say anything about that? Like, hey, uh, Miss Lady, it's, it's cool. I get what you're saying. But let's just concentrate on the task at hand. And that's you training me and me, you know, and me learning from you. We We, we don't need to go to no outside conversation or anything like that, especially if it's just, if it's making you uncomfortable. Did you by chance kind of say anything about that or no? I was just, I was just, cause she, she was married. She had a husband, she had two kids. So I was just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of used to, you know, women trying to, you know, throw little hints and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm not one of those people like, so I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings too much, especially if we on the road together. And, you know, I know I'm not going back home until two weeks later, so I didn't want it to be an awkward situation. But on the fourth week, I, um, on the fourth week, we got laid over. Well, the second week I was out with her, once we parked, she wouldn't do none of the driving. Let me just add that. She wouldn't do none of the driving. She would stay up all night have the, the the sleeper lights on above my bunk so to 11 12 o'clock got the tv on 11 12 o'clock and i would tell her like she would adjust i tell her like, i got asthma like it's hot in here i can't breathe like that she'll turn the turn the air off down there like i wake up sweating <laughs> i had to tell her like hey look just getting out of hand with the heat like i can't breathe if you that hot like she would she literally brought like hoochie, like hoochie mama shorts to sleep in, little tank tops and stuff like that. Her ass peeks out. Like that's how she was in the truck. And I'm like, if you would put on some clothes, then maybe you wouldn't be so cold. You got two blankets. It's easier for you to wrap up and put on some clothes than me sitting up here sweating. And she's like, oh, well, if you wasn't here, I'll be in my birthday suit. Like stuff like that. So the the fourth week we was in Florida, and I had my girlfriend actually drive up there since we was laid over. We ended up being laid over for like four days. So 
because they want us to pick up a trailer. The trailer had a big gas in the side about two two feet long on the side of the trailer. I told her I wasn't taking, I wasn't driving. She need to call, she need to call the DM. They tell us to put tape over it. <laughs> I said, I'm not putting tape over it because first of all, it's on the right side. So if we go through the way station, they're gonna see it. And it's not like we just going down the road. We going from Texas to Florida. So you know we were going at that time, we was going from Florida back to Texas. So she she finally told him like, no, we're not taking it. It's not safe, blah, blah, blah. I call my girlfriend, like, okay, come up here, because we laid over for like four days. She get there and um, you know, I invite the trainer because she been hearing, I've been telling her every day, look, this is what she doing today, this is what she doing today, this is what she doing today. So my girl was kind of getting mad, like, why she doing all of this? So she came up there and we got a hotel or whatever. And I introduced her to my trainer. And my trainer like, well, y'all y'all can sleep in the truck if y'all want to. Now, I don't think that's company policy. But she was like on some stuff like, y'all can sleep in the truck if y'all want to. Y'all can take my bed and I'll sleep on the top. And I'm like, nah, we're going to get a room. So, you know, over them four days that we was laid over, <laughs> my girl, like, I had to tell her like, calm down. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Like, she was even doing it in front of my girl. Wow. Uh, nah, we, we we not sleeping in no truck. <laughs> Especially not 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 with you, not <laughs> not being uh, hygiene-centric. No, nah, we, we, we cool on that, bro. <laughs> we cool it was so on that. bad that when she, when she got in my girl's car, my girls was like, dang, what's the smell? Even though I already told her, like, don't say nothing. But she was calling her out on it anyway. But my trainer, she just act like it, like we wasn't talking to her. So, so let's talk about that, man. Uh, you know, you, I, I, I'm, I am so surprised at how nasty women can be, man. Because this is not the first, this oh, is not the first yeah. story that I heard of, of, of females being nasty, man. I, I, I would thought that you guys would be like the most cleanest people in the freaking world, man. Considering. What you what you guys got going on? Our favorite Korean's getting robbed right now. You serious? First he tells me his wife has the flu. Oh man, that bitch would work if she was dead. Then he gives me the coffee for free. Shit. He is getting robbed. How do you want to play it? Yeah, we females, we can't just sit in no truck for twelve hours a day not watching. Come on now. She would literally go three days. I would have to tell her like, hey. Where we where we stopping tonight? We parking at a truck stop because you know I got a shower. Like I kept making it adamant every day. We parking at a truck stop tonight, shutting down at the truck stop because I need to shower. And I would go shower, and she'd be like, "I'm gonna just wait until the until we stop again." What you mean you gonna wait till we stop again? If I smell you, you smell you. See, that's 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 mad disrespectful. I, to me. I was even offering my shower credits. I was even offering her my shower credits. It got that bad. Now I'm like, hey, they take ten shower credits here. Come on, like, let's 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 get a shower in. Like, try to say it like this. Like, literally, have to tell this woman to wash her ass. Man, that's that's mad disrespectful to me. I mean, you sitting up here. I, I <laughs> maybe maybe a a a day. You know, maybe I can I can I can pass a day because, like I said, I don't shower every day, but I bird bath every day. She ain't even do that. She yeah. ain't break out no. No baby wipes or nothing like that. Just just got up in the that, seat and just started all, driving. What's up? That's all she wanted to do was pull out baby wipes and summer e spray. That's not cool. You no no no. And it got to the point that I even asked her like, "Do you got what kind of <laughs> this? I what kind of deodorant do you use?" And she was like, "I got a men's a men's deodorant and a woman's deodorant." I was like, "Something's not working. Like I don't know if you're putting them both on at the same time, but something's not working." And like she just act like it didn't bother. It's it's a shame that a grown woman has to tell another grown woman about their hygiene. I mean that's that's crazy. The part is I was prepared because my local trainer told me about her and said, "Oh yeah, she don't believe in deodorant because she's Haitian." But she was under the impression that 
she like she don't believe in deodorant. Everybody said that she must be, and she a little crazy. And I was like, oh God, here we go. Like I can't deal with no funk, but no, she used deodorant. She just funky. <laughs> she don't wash. So the whole disrespectful time that you was there, I mean, she she didn't she didn't respect the fact that you know you was in the top bunk. You try to get some sleep. She disrespect you with the eat. Disrespect you with the noise. Like, how did you manage yeah. through all of that? And after after being out there with her for so long, what what was the outcome? Well, she she started noticing like you know she started noticing when I wasn't feeling the situation like. Once once she done piss me off, I just get quiet for hours. And I mean, that's just me with anybody. Once I get mad, it's just better for me to shut up because I end up turning the whole situation into, you know, Mount Everest. So I just shut up. And she'll be like, I, I'll be shut up for three, four hours just driving. And she, and she try to make conversation. I don't even answer. Like, oh, you see that? Or what's wrong? You go, you okay? I just shake my head. Like she, she would know that. Okay, I'm pissed off. Like, stop, stop, stop fucking with me at this point. I tell you, I'm tired. You don't want to drive. You, you say no. I can't drive because it's gonna mess up the clock. But then it, it was come to a point that I told her, like, look, you telling me to put off duty as soon as I pull into the fuel hour. As soon as we get to a truck stop, go off duty. Stay on the fire mask for hours so it don't click on duty. So we spend 45 minutes in the truck stop. I'm off duty. We go, we pull up to a load, shipping shipping or receiving. We pull up, get a load or unload, go off duty. As soon as you hit the yard, stay on the five miles per hour. I'm not doing that. I'm supposed to be on duty. So eventually, I end up telling, like, once I got back, I told, like, look, this was going on. You know, she messed with my loads. Uh, One week I drove, what was it, 1,994 miles. From Texas, Dallas, Texas, to Brownwood, Texas, to Temple, Florida, Sarasota, Florida, back to Eden, North Carolina. My set was 294. 294. How much? 294. Okay, is that is that training? Is is that training pay? Like huh? no, training pay is supposed to be no, nah, that's not training pay. Um, but what happened was we was laid over. So they didn't consider me being available for work, even though I'm 2,000 miles away from home on this truck. They didn't consider me being available for work because we was laid over due to them. So once I told them, like, no, I was on that truck the whole time. I've been out for two weeks. Like, I've been doing all this driving. They're like, oh, my fault, our fault, our fault. We're going to fix it. We didn't realize it, but that's our mistake. So I'm already thinking, I'm a new driver. If I didn't know a little bit, then they would have got off. Did go back and correct it. So you you did get a little bit more than than 294 Yeah, they end up giving me an extra, I think, $200, which still wasn't my full pay. They still owed me two hundred dollars after they fixed it. So what was the so what was the training pay for the for the whole four weeks? Like what would you was supposed to be getting for weekly training pay? The weekly training pay was six hundred. And if you drive over in miles, then you get more. But I I when when they messed up my check, I was asking them to break it down. And they couldn't really break it down. It's like, yeah, it doesn't. I know it doesn't make sense. If it don't make, if you can't break it down, then I can't break it down. What's the name of this company again? Made. Made. M A D or M A B E. M A B as in boy. B E S M A B E S. Oh, Mabe. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so after they you, got like the old Facebook page and everything. So after you uh, finished up, what did you finish up with her? With with the trainer? Nah, I when I got back, I told I told the recruiter what was going on about her keeping the lights on, you know, um, to eleven, twelve o'clock at night. 
messing with the heat. She not showering. Her hygiene is terrible. I've been trying to stick it out. She keep on coming off sideways to me. Um, she messing with my law. She told me to be off duty when I know for a fact I'm supposed to be on duty. Like, I just can't, I can't do it. I'm trying, but I can't. So they put me with somebody. They had a little talk with me and they, they put me with somebody else. That was even worse. <laughs> that was even worse. They put me with a male. That, that was even worse. All right. So without going into full spectrum, give us a synopsis of what actually happened between you and him. Why don't you make me a double espresso macchiato with extra foam? You got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't you make it like your life depends on it? Um, I only had two weeks of training left. So my recruiter said, okay, you're going to go out with this guy. Are you okay with that? I said, yeah, I'm okay with that. After experiencing her nastiness, I'm cool with that. So... Um, she called the guy and he said, yeah, I'll train a female. Uh, I went out the first, she told me the recruiter before I left out with him. She told me, um, okay, go home, go home today. Come back tomorrow. Y'all going to leave out. Okay, cool. But she told me that we was going to be doing, I only had one more hour. Once I reached 150 hours, I would be doing team driving. So I was at 149 hours when they switched, switched my trainer. So I'm like, okay, cool. So she was like, you know, when, when you driving, he'll be in the sleeper. When he's driving, you'll be in the sleeper. So y'all really won't be in the sleeper together. But okay, cool. We didn't do no team driving. <laughs> I did all the driving. As soon as I got in the truck, he, he stayed in the front seat maybe 30 minutes, went to the back, closed the curtains, had the GPS where I was supposed to go. He didn't come out the, he didn't come out the back until we got there. I asked him about the team driving. He said he, ain't, he didn't hear nothing about that. He don't know why she told you that. And he was going to say something to her because he felt some type of way with her saying we went me in a sleeper together. So once I got back and uh, I guess he had talked to her and I was like, you know, we're not doing team driving. She said, I never said that. Said, okay, here we go again. I'm going to have to talk to somebody. That's when I put out my phone and uh, started recording. And that just pretty much let me go. Like, after I told him everything, like, yeah, you know, he's staying in the back. How he going to know if I'm, I'm driving good or how he know what's going on if he got the curtains closed all the whole time? Y'all said I wasn't even doing team driving. We not doing that. He, all he's telling me is the easiest drug to do <laughs> as a truck driver is shrooms because it's out the system for four hours. That's the most talking that he did to me the whole time. The whole, the whole week we was drunk on was about shrooms. God damn it, man. Oh no, I, I I told him that. And I got I got it all on recording. And all he kept telling me was, Well, I don't think this is gonna be a good fit for you. I don't think it's gonna be a good fit for you. I, I said, Okay, you know what? I done told you I'm willing to drive. I'm willing to be over the road. That's what I wanna do. Um, you know, but I'm I'm bringing the the issues to your to your attention. And if you just gonna keep saying pretty much it's not a good fit, then it's not a good fit. I'm not gonna keep begging. So did you? Uh, so after that, did you? Are are you still with the company now or no? No, absolutely not. That that was the end of the conversation. It wasn't no. Oh well, we gonna we gonna write it. This isn't a good fit. I can't. I even applied for another job and. Maybe won't confirm or reach back out or verify that I work for them. So somebody told me, like, you know, pull up your DAC report. Nate's not even on there. <laughs> so I was like, I'm starting all the way over with a year CDL and no experience. Wow, that's crazy, man. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's, two, it's well, terrible. well, two trucking companies down. Um, I mean, where? Yeah. I mean, where, where, where are you at in all of this now? I mean, I know you said earlier that uh, that you know it, it's getting to the point that you might just leave trucking alone. So where, where are you at? Like, you had your CDL for a year. You, you know, the first company was was uh, was in shambles. The second company 
you just couldn't get through the training phase. And and I worked, worked for I worked for you know the little mom and pop which my mom dispatched for this guy. I did the hot shot six months for him, and it, it was the same thing. Editing your log, sleep in the in the back of the truck. You can't sleep in no hot shot for no ten dollar reset. What are you thinking? Sending me on loads with without the proper equipment. I'm a new driver, first job, don't know anything, have to call my uncle, FaceTime, like, hey, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to be throwing chains or straps? How do I do the chains? You know, it, it was terrible. Man. <laughs> well, all right. Holly, man, thank you for the conversation, man. I really enjoyed it. I really did, man. This this is... Big Cheese got it locked, boy. Don't you remember?